I'm in filming mode. So this chapter is about ecosystems. And so an ecosystem is how organisms relate to the environment. So you're talking about how um, uh, when uh, you have living things and non-living things interacting with one another. So the living things are the, uh, are the plants, animals, um, you know, protists and bacteria and such. And the non-living things are like the air and the water and the soil, um, things that are abiotic. So you got your biotic factors, your living things, and your abiotic factors, your non-living things. And how they interact is important with one another. And so uh, they're talking about different biomes and such. There's desert and there's rainforest. And we already went over the biomes, didn't we, in a previous chapter? Did we, did we talk about the biomes? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Good, good. We don't have to go over that. Ooh, there's a desert. You know where that desert is? Um, Arizona. No. It is in Arizona. That's the only place you find these saguaro, saguaro cactuses. Cacti. They're really cool. Though. I got a picture of me hugging a saguaro cactus. Aren't they I don't show you that. No they're real. Oh, they don't hurt yeah. They're real spines. He's so different. You have to gently hug. Um, okay, so what you need to understand is that when, uh, when organisms eat other organisms, you form what's called a food chain. And here it shows a food chain. Algae are the what we call the primary producers. Uh, a producer is something that does photosynthesis and takes the sunlight and puts, takes carbon dioxide and water and puts it all together to make food. So it produces food, that's why we call it a producer. So algae, this is some sort of algae, um, that's a producer and it'll make the food and then something will eat the algae. So the, the algae stores the food inside its body and then something will eat it and get that, those food molecules and, and then, of course, break them apart in respiration um, to make energy. So, the algae is, it always starts with producers. And then the mollusks here look like some snails. They eat the algae and so they're consumers. Producers make the food, then consumers eat the food. So the snails eat the algae. Have you ever seen the snails crawling up and down on the marsh grass? Mm -hmm. Little periwinkle snails. Ooh, they're so nice. they're e you know what they're doing on the marsh grass, crawling up and down it. They're eating algae that's growing on the marsh grass. They don't really eat the marsh grass itself, but some of them they, they can eat the marsh grass. But um, they they're also they're usually eating algae that's on the marsh grass. And so the snails um, get eaten by whatever this thing is, a slimy sculpin kind of fish that comes in there and eats the snails. So the mollusks are the primary consumer. The sculpin is the secondary consumer. Now, since it is eating an animal, we could also call it a carnivore. If something eats another animal, we call it a carnivore. What do we call something that eats um, plants or, or producers? Not a carnivore. Do you know another word? Herbivore. herbivore. Yeah. So another name for a primary consumer is an herbivore. And another name for a secondary consumer is a carnivore. And I guess this Chinook salmon that eats the sculpin, that's also a carnivore, isn't it? Because eating another animal. But in this case, it's the third consumer in the chain, so it's called the tertiary consumer. And in this food chain, there's nothing that eats it. Although you could think of some things that eat a salmon, like a, a bear. But um, maybe there's no bears in this area. So they're the, uh, the, the top consumer, um, which is often called the apex consumer. There's another word you need to know. It's called a predator. Have you ever heard predator and prey? Mm -hmm. yeah. The predator is the thing that's catching what's underneath it. So this would be predator, that would be prey. 
This would be predator, that would be prey for this one. And you don't really say predator prey when you're eating plants. Um, predator prey is kind of reserved for animals. So they'll throw all these words at you, um, and you have to kind of kind of keep track of it. So we call these different parts of the food chain trophic levels. Have you ever heard that word before? Yep. Trophic. Trophic means feeding. Feeding levels. So this is trophic level one. This is trophic level two. This is trophic level three. This is trophic level four. As you go up in the food chain, you get higher and higher trophic levels. But trophic level one are always the producers. So that's the first. Trophic means feeding. So this is trophic level one. This is the first feeding level, we would say. So as you see, as we go up in trophic levels, we start with the primary producers have contained, this is a graph showing how much energy content there is at the different trophic levels. And you can see the primary producers have a huge amount of energy in them. There's always a lot of your producers around. If you look, just look around um, plants, our, our producers, so look around at all the plants. Isn't there a lot of them out there? You look out the window, you see a lot more plants than animals, right? There's always a high energy content in the producers because they're the ones starting making the food, getting the energy from the sun. And then there's the, the primary consumers that eat the producers. There's more of them around than there are secondary consumers or tertiary consumers. There's a lot more insects, for instance, than there are um, squirrels. You know, uh, because the insects are usually the ones eating the um, plants. And so um, there's a lot of them around because there's a lot of plants. With each step you go up in a food chain, you're losing a lot of energy that is, is used as heat or is lost as heat. So... Um, there's kind of just a rough uh, a rule of thumb that every step you go up in a food chain, about 90% of the energy is lost. So here's our primary producers that have this 23,000 kilocalories per square meter per year of energy. And your primary consumers only have about 10% of that energy because they eat the plants, and, like, if you're one insect, you just don't eat one plant in your life. You eat a whole bunch of them, right? Think of all the food you've eaten in your life if you could add it all up. It'd be a lot. I mean, how many steaks have you eaten? Probably a good amount, you know? How many sandwiches have you eaten? If you could weigh all that food, it would weigh a lot more than you do. So, so every step of the food chain you go up, you get way less organisms. If you only had to eat as much as you weigh, well, you wouldn't have to eat much food, but you have to eat a lot more because in your daily activities, you're expending a lot of energy, you're burning a lot of fuel, and so you have to eat a whole lot just for your little life to keep going on. And, you, um, and so we always see that. We always see high amounts of energy the lower you get on the food chain. And that can be expressed in what's called a, um, a um, ecological pyramid, which we're going to go over tomorrow. Now, this is showing the idea that food chains um, don't exist alone. For instance, let me go back to this food chain. Mollusks aren't the only thing that eat algae. And these sculpins aren't the only thing that eat mollusks. There's an interaction that's very complex. So these algae are eaten not just by the snails, but they're eaten by all these other things. There's a lot of things that eat algae. And so they, they show this as kind of like uh, this line goes up, and all of these things can eat the algae. And 
these lines go up, and all of these things here can can uh, eat these uh, um, these organisms on trophic level too. And so there's this there's this interconnection amongst organisms um, at, at the different levels. And sometimes you can skip levels. For instance, you could have some of these organisms here. They, they might eat these organisms on trophic level two, but sometimes they might eat organisms on trophic level one. Look at this one. You see how this line goes all the way up straight to him? So him or her, I don't know what it is, but anyway, some kind of shrimp. But that shrimp can eat from trophic level two or it can eat from trophic level one. There's a wide variety of, of ways. So, so all these interconnections are very complex and we call that the food web, okay? We're out of time. Peace out. Uh, read, 